science degree <coughs> from West Virginia Tech. I got that from 1989. Uh, when I was born in, first off, what I want to tell you is your students don't think they have to know what they want to do in life now because they don't. Because I didn't know what I wanted to be in life until I took graduate from high school and went through nine years. Then I decided what I wanted to do for life. I said, I got, after I got my degree, I spent three years, well, I spent two years during my degree at co-op, where I did construction, then I worked for the, the government for two years, and I worked in consulting for two years, or three years. And um, that was kind of my game plan, because then it was like, all right, after I do that, I'll kind of know what I want to do. And I went back into what I liked the best, which was actually construction. Um, went to work for a developer. We would go out and find properties. There's going to be an entitlement process, hire the engineers, get everything done. I'd oversee all the construction. But we were getting really bad engineering drawings. <laughs> so the guy I worked for said, can you do my engineering? Because I had gotten my PE involved. And I said, I can do it, but I can't work for it. So that's how family engineering got started. I didn't have this grand scheme of, I want to go through all this, and I want to start an engineering company one day. And did I ever think I'd have 51 employees? No, I didn't. Uh, so it, it, don't think just because a student doesn't know what they want to do in life, that they're doing. Um, now these here, we offer civil transportation, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, construction engineering, land planning, surveying, and landscape architecture. Uh, a lot of firms will say we offer all these things, but they have one person that wears several hats. We don't have anybody that wears more than one hat. Uh, Plumbing engineers, that's all they do. We have electrical engineers, that's all they do. We don't crisscross. We know kind of whatever, whatever engineers do, but engineers become such a specialty that they do their own thing. Uh, our work radius is we do about a five hour drive time around the city of Hattiesburg, the Rocky Hill County, say. Uh, but in that five hour, five hour drive, we currently work in 53 hospitals in Virginia and West Virginia. And healthcare is about 70% of our workforce. And our largest single hurdle, with all the changes and everything and all the rules, and everybody sees when the, when the rules change with the government, oh, it's doom and gloom. We look at it as an opportunity. <laughs> because when the rules change, it changes what people have to do, it means they've got to hire us to change it. So we do that. Uh, but our, our largest hurdle is finding qualified people at all levels to hire. We, we can't do it, and that's leading us to look into, we're going to open branch offices now in the rich areas where we can't get, we've had a discussion with the city. This is a great place to live. This is a great place to raise a family. It's very hard to get somebody to move here and stay here. They don't care about the fact that we're only two hours in DC. They care about the fact that I can't live here, walk to work, and walk to the show, and walk to the shops. We can't do that. So it, it's tough to get people to move here because of that. Here's my teacher's life. When you talk about uh, the influence you all have on, on students, please realize it's more than what you probably say. Uh, and I really mean that. Uh, this is my sixth grade picture. That's me right there. In 1977, 78. I was in the sixth grade. Um, that's Mrs. Brown. Probably one of the least teachers I ever had. And I'm up here praising her. She's doing that too. Uh, I hated math so bad. And this is on my mom, and she still makes fun of me. I hated math so bad. I would throw up, wait for the bus. I would go up on the bus. I would go up at school. Because I hated math. And I don't know what it was, but seven times eight, it was 56, still kind of freaks me out. <laughs> um, that's my class. When they would start math, I would go to the special ed class. And I worked with a teacher there, Mrs. Franz, worked with me. And it got me to understand math is not bad. It's okay, not everybody's going to like it, but you don't have to get to the point that you're throwing up because you hate a class. And she 
she helped me get through that. And six years later, when I took the ACT, I didn't take the SAT, I took the ACT, because I went to an in-state school. The one question I missed in the math was, it was five exclamation, or exclamation mark. I had no idea what that meant. But that was the one question I missed on the math test. Uh, so it's, it's, don't think you don't influence people and students with what you do because you do. Just encourage everybody. And then there's me, uh, when I graduated, uh, I was a little bit of math and I was really bad in spelling. <laughs> My board board, it says civil, C-I-V-I-L, engineer, right, and <laughs> what do we look for? What, what makes a good engineer? Core values, common sense, a good attitude, dedication, a friendly person, team players, and you've got to know your limits. It's really easy, and I say that because we're not rocket scientists. I know who was it said her husband was a, oh, Natasha, her husband is a, uh, uh, aerospace engineer. What we do is a rocket science. What we do is rocket science. Uh, but we can teach anybody to do what we do. But what's really hard is we can teach a good person how to be an engineer, but it's tough to teach a really good engineer how to be a good person. And we go for good people. Who can fit in with our team and, and go with us and learn and, and just accept what we do? And that's what we look for. Uh, technical talents, common sense. See it's on there twice. Yeah. <laughs> read the joke, read the thing. Common sense is going away. Uh, some of the smartest people I know, and I tell, I tell this thing to their face, they're the smartest person I know academic wise, but they're some of the dumbest people I know. Uh, when I graduated from high school, well, the year before I graduated from high school, the valedictorian, Smart, genius, brilliant, senior skip back. He didn't have a light of bag charcoal to put in the grill. So common sense goes a long way in what we do. Math um, skills, critical thinking, communication skills, written and verbal, embracing <coughs> technology, see what you're designing, and construction experience. A lot of people, um, a lot of people, you say, uh, We'll go to a meeting and say, well, we'll meet with a client, and they say, all right, we want to do this on this site, and that's what we want. Well, as they're telling us what we want, we're getting it in our head what that's going to look like. And then we put that vision on it. So that um, it, it's, we hear what they say, we appreciate what they say, but then we put it on paper so the contractors are getting to go out to the building. And that's a it's kind of a gift, and a lot of people I don't think appreciate it as much. Um, and if you don't think that seeing and believing and understanding like that is important, um, I was in a seminar one time, and the guy goes, I'm standing here. Can you picture a lemon in my hand? Can you see the lemon? Can you smell it? Can you go in back into your brain? Can you smell? Can you see and smell the lemon in my hand? Now I just all got to do is put it on paper. So that's how you you you've got to absorb what people are saying. Um, common sense it is that's a huge thing in our business, and it comes from construction experience. Most of the engineers at our office have come through construction. We have a kind of one of our core philosophies: if you don't know how to build it, how can you design it? Because too many people put a student I might for crap on a flat sheet of paper, but they have no idea how to build it when it gets outside. So have some, some construction experience. We were talking about too about what engineers, what we want to see in people. This is an exercise we just did as a man, our management group at Valley Engineering. We sat down and we were going through. It's like, all right, what are our core competencies? What are our core competencies for our employees and for our company? Our employees. This came not from me, but from all our managers. 
technology flexibility, project coordination, teamwork, experience of knowledge, problem solving, and forward thinking. That's what we decided. That those are the six factors we want to see in employees. So just put them up there. It's, it's, it's not hard to do it, but that's what we're looking for. Right. Bear with me for a couple minutes. I want, to, I want you all to watch a video. If you go back to when I said 70% of our work is in health this is a video that was put together by the Cleveland Clinic uh, with an architect that we do a lot of work with. Uh, and it, it's, it's not about the, the hospital itself. It's about, this is about what goes on in the hospital. But in our industry, because we do so much health care, we take a lot of pride in this because everything in this video, the hallway, the lights, where you, down to where you see the, the dispensers for hand sanitizer, we tell them where to put all that stuff. But this is what, and this is why we do it. I
very, very proud of what we just had this year. Because every person in that video, uh, did we work on that hospital itself? No, we didn't. Uh, but we, we do a lot of work on hospitals. And it's, it's really, really gratifying uh, when we do something like that. Um, I was at Winchester Medical Center last week for a meeting. And the helicopter was coming in. And it was really cool because I stopped the car to watch it land. And the guy was with me, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I want to watch a helicopter land. And he's like, you've seen that before? Yeah, but I designed that helicopter. That the helicopter land. That's what's cool. Um, University of Virginia, this is their electric physiology lab. When I started down in engineering, um, it was a big deal in the site and the construction of the site and the building itself was a million dollars. God, that's so much money. That room was three Just that one room in the hospital. Uh, this is War Memorial Hospital. Uh, Anybody back from the Barbara Springs, West Virginia. That's the new hospital that we designed now. We did the, the only thing we didn't do on that project in Harrisonburg was the architecture. Uh, we did the civil transportation mechanical electrical and structural engineer here in Harrisonburg for that new facility. And when, you, when, you, when you're trying to talk to students about here's what you got to do and here's what you need to do, let them think outside the box. And this hospital is a perfect example of that. The land was going to be donated to the hospital. And that's great. We got free land for to save our construction costs. The only issue was there was only a four-inch water main that served that site. They're like, how do we do it? We can't get fired from a four-inch water main. Uh, so if you look at this picture, it's a little deceiving. Uh, there's actually another pond right here. This whole front parking lot drains to this pond. <clears throat> this pond drains, gravity-wise, of all the firefighters around the hospital. Huh. And we got we came up with that concept. All right, what happens if this pond freezes? We work with Noah to figure out what the, the, the worst case thickness of ice could be in that pond. And we make sure we had enough of unfrozen water below the ice. Fight fire. What happens if this pond goes dry? We pump out there. <coughs> what if this pond goes dry? This pond drains into this pond. What happens if it still goes dry? We dug wells to keep water in this pond. This pond talks to this pond. If this pond gets too low, it pumps water up to that pond. So that we always have water. People thought we came up with that idea. People thought <coughs> we were nuts. It'll never work. Nobody will ever get it approved. <laughs> it's a great idea. So, just because a student doesn't follow the perceived guidelines, doesn't mean they're wrong. There's, there's more ways to stand. James Madison University, a lot of work we do here. We do a lot of work here. Um, that's top left is the Board for Performing Arts Center. We did all the surveying on that. The bottom right is the uh, reservoir. The net avenue fields or reservoir street fields, whatever that's called. We did all the surveying on that. We did all the surveying on Memorial Stadium. I talked about we have an issue finding people to fill positions. <coughs> our head of surveying, there's <coughs> one license surveyor in our, in our company. That's a big issue for me because we don't have any backup. He's 45, 47 years old. He doesn't know a licensed surveyor younger than him. Where are we going to find anybody? If something happens to him, where are we going to find another licensed surveyor? So everybody that's in STEM and wants to go to engineering or anything like that, they don't have to become engineers. They can become surveyors. They spend all their time outside, get a license, and we'll hire them tomorrow. Um, Wayland Hall. One of the top ten greenest dorms in the world. It was the first LEED Platinum dorm renovation project in the United States. We did the civil engineering for that here. Uh, the lower left corner picture, 
is that's the down at the intersection of Cantrell and Main Street, the new hotel and conference center that's being built down there. That's what that's called. Uh, we did the civil check. Okay, how many things? Somebody read <laughs> 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 Two of my, my, well, my, both of my sons that go to WVU. Um, I'm a huge WVU fan. We, we do a lot of work for West Virginia University. Um, we do a lot of work at the University of Virginia. We do more and more work for James Madison University. We work for BMI. But this is some of the work that we've done at James or at WVU. Um, we did their weight room expansion, made, a, made a, one of the largest weight rooms in Division I sports in the country. Uh, we did their team meeting room. Uh, that was a new project because it has all the bells and whistles electronically, so they can sit in and they can have different monitors going and, and that type of thing. Uh, we did coaches meeting rooms. That's another picture of the weight room. Sorry, I like this <laughs> They just completed the phase one construction of a $50 million stadium expansion project. We're going to redo all the concourses and all the bathrooms and, and just working on the football stadium. We split that up into two years because it couldn't all be done in one year. Uh, from, we can start in January, but then it have to be done in August. But there's not enough time to do both sides of the stadium. So we'll have the stadium is passed off season, and we'll start the other half of the season, stadium in this January. Massey Hunt Resort, uh, we've done 95% of the engineering at Massey Hunt. Uh, one project we're going now is uh, we're trying to get more water to make snow out, snow with. Uh, it's a big problem. It's, it's a big concern of theirs. Is if we get the cold weather, have enough water for the, to make snow. <clears throat> we're going 100 feet down below the wastewater treatment plant. And we're putting an intake into the pond or into the creek. Into the creek, we're going to pump up from there to a lagoon. We're going to pump a lagoon two miles up the mountain into Painter Pond. So we're designing two pump stations, two miles of 12 inch water line. The pumps, we're going to have three 750 horsepower pumps running. That's a huge project. And we're doing it just so they can make snow. Some of the school projects that we work on in here, Cover Elementary, the new school, we did that. The new school, the middle school here in Harrisonburg, we did that. Uh, anybody familiar? Every job you do isn't glamorous, <laughs> but they're just as important as a next job. <clears throat> anybody familiar with Front Royal? Shenandoah Avenue, the front of the hill in front of the hospital? It used to be four lanes. There was two, it was only designed as a two-lane road, but it was so wide. People, they, they, they almost kind of worked it as this four-lane road. People were driving too fast. And the hospital sits here. A lot of their parking is over across the road. They had two employees get hit by a car and one got killed. So what we did is we went in and we put these islands in <coughs> and trees to narrow the road width down, and it slowed people down. And we made people walk across the road someplace they can stay. And I did, when they start walking, I had to walk across two lanes versus walk across four lanes. So every job is not glamorous, but every job is important. Uh, we just did a project for the University of Virginia. It's about $200 million expansion to the hospital. I was working on that last week, and I was designing the chicken house last week. <laughs> so every job is just as important. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, we also do residential. We've got a little subdivision here in Harrisonburg. We do a lot of commercial. All of we do is large burgers. <coughs> uh, we did White Lake Foods. We've got in uh, Mount Crawford. All the expansion and stuff they've been doing. We've been designing that. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> really well How things have changed. She was talking to Terry. was talking about. Uh, how, uh, how things have changed since she was in school. Imagine how much has changed since I was in school. Um, that calculator, the top picture, I took a picture of it and put it in there. And I bought that in 
Talk about holding the lemon up and seeing you know, can you see this lemon, can you smell the lemon? That's what the clients demand now in, in what we do. They want to be able to see it. I, wanna, I don't want to I don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars and send it to an architect and get a rendering back in four weeks. I want you to use the software you have and so you can tell me what it is going to look like. How much it's going to cost, not even four days. And that's what it's come to. Uh, the top left picture is a program we use called Site Ops. We can go anywhere in the world and pull in topographic and boundary information. It doesn't matter where it's at. We'll pull in the topo, we can pull in what's readily available, boundary information. We'll put a building on, and like a parking app, we get a button. It'll tell us. It'll give us uh, grading options to go through. Um, and the issue with that is because we can do it so fast, people think that our job is easier. Well, that's that's like the first five challenge. We still have to go through and do everything, all the, the calculations and stuff. Do we have the programs for all the calculations? Absolutely, we do. One of my rules is for new engineers. You show me that you can do it by hand and you have some anticipation of what the answer should be, then you can start using the computer programs. Because just because a computer program spits out this answer, don't take it for gospel. <coughs> uh, you drive around Harrisonburg and see a lot of retaining walls that have failed because people took for gospel what the computer program said and they didn't know any better. So, Learn stuff, push the problem solving and that type of thing, push it by hand. Make them figure it out. What should your answer be? Then you work the program or work with the go through and you come up with your answer. And okay. I thought it should be about 12, it's 11 and a half. That's good. Then you know when you get to that level, then you start putting it in the program and you think <coughs> it should be 12, and it's about 22. Something's not right. You gotta have the common sense to know that's not right. Just don't take it for gospel. Um, these are actually that's a, a rendering. Uh, the lower right is a rendering we did of a building here in Harrisonburg. The lower left, that's a Google Earth image. And these buildings here are proposed. But that's what people expect now. Is to give them documents and stuff like that. Upper right, um, that's the Kroger shopping mall or shopping center in Harrisonburg. Um, you can see how long the um, 33, there's a gas uh, station there. And what it is, is we just did a TIA. Um, Kroger's is putting a gas station there. Um, it's not going there now, but that's one of the drawings that we had to do to show them where, where, where we go. Where we go. Mechanical, electrical, plumbing, engineering. It 
used to be to do their work on black sheet of paper. And you try to go through the amount of stuff that it would work when they started to build it. Now we're designing everything in three dimensions. The contractors, what we'll do, the, the upper left, that's a mechanical drawing. Uh, the lower right is an electrical drawing showing the conduits and everything. The top right is where we're trying to put everything together. We'll give that drawing file to the contractor now, and they have people that just sit there looking for conflicts to make sure everything works. Um, if everything will work, the difference in construction today from 10 years ago is this stuff is so accurate, they'll take you know, they have flange, this pipe, a valve, and a bend, or an elbow, to another piece of pipe. They're pre-manufacturing that stuff in the warehouse. So that when they go to the job site, all they got to do is they come out, and it's like one to two, I screw one to two, and that's done. So we're not trying to fit all this stuff together in the field. All the electrical conduits and stuff, they're, we're going in job sites now where there's an outlet here, and it's number 57, and they pulled off the truck, and the outlet is already on the conduit, they screw it to the stud, the conduit runs up and turns, and everything ties together perfectly. So that's that's where construction's going. So just because somebody has, don't think that this engineering and math, or science and technology, is if you have some mobility, there's going to be room for everybody. Back to what you said, not everybody's got to be a PhD. Not everybody is going to be a PhD. But there, there's room out there for everybody. So don't, don't turn anybody off. There's a place for it. Structural, same way. Uh, it used to be that we would design something and sit for days just writing calculations out make sure all the reactions and everything work. Now, go to right, quick picture. We put in sizes, do all our connections, and the software will come back and say, uh, here's where you have areas of concern that are shipped to us. Types of engineering programs, when I was in school, you want to be <coughs> a civil mechanical <coughs> Now, there's over 40 different disciplines in these 11 or 12 major categories. So the engineering field is getting much bigger. The need for engineers? I pulled these numbers off yesterday. There's a website, engineeringjobs.com. They have over 300,000 engineering jobs in the United States and Canada. So I just looked, there's 11,000 civil engineering jobs, 4,000 chemical. 26,000 electrical, 17,000 mechanical, 15,000 dollars, or 15,000 of those jobs are in Virginia, 78 of them come back up to We're looking for three engineers, that's not on that list. That's the demand that's happening. What can you do? Continue to push your, your STEM courses, encourage all students of all levels to do their best. I was not a straight-A student. It was far from it. Uh, I got to meet the dean of the engineering school when I was in college. And I got to call, talk where he said to do it again and that. So it's, don't think that every everybody going into this does not have to be a straight-A student. I wasn't. I think I've done all right for myself. <laughs> I've done, in, in anything I've done, I've always tried to do my best. My best was only a C, then I, then I was okay with that. Don't, don't think that, if you have a, a student that, that doesn't have straight A's, but they want to be an engineer, if they're a C student, they're not going to get into UVA, they're not going to get into Virginia Tech. I went to West Virginia Tech, they had 3,000 students. You don't have to get into the top tier programs for everything. Probably the, the one discipline that is the most pedigree driven our industry is architects. Uh, it means a lot to architects what school they go to. Uh, if you find a <coughs> health
healthcare related architect that went to Clemson University. He's like God. <laughs> Good kid with common sense and made seeds, but he gets along with people every day of the week over the straight A student. That's a joke. <laughs> uh, plain and simple. That's, that's the way to do it. Uh, encourage students to utilize technology to work in groups, prepare them for presentations. Work together. Don't try to do everything yourself. Get them in groups. That drives me nuts. Uh, we're building a new office now. Uh, our first office, I had one bedroom and a double white trailer. I went from that to I had my own single white trailer. Uh, <coughs> 6,000 square feet over on 42. We have 12,500 square feet now. We're leaving that with only 19,000 square feet. Uh, but we're planning for the millennials, and it drives me nuts. Because I'm old, I'm an engineer, everything's supposed to be straight, it's squared off, it's more efficient. We're getting these hallways that start at 8 feet wide, they flare out to 11, with rounded corners. I don't want to be involved with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear other people at the firm, you deal with that stuff, because if it's me, I'm going back to square it. It's cheaper to build and they're more efficient. Um, but don't know how many students think. Everybody, everybody, the, the, I'll say it again, the C student 